achieve that. And now, obviously, we, we have an opportunity to play against Kaiser Chiefs and, and, and uh, try and see ourselves getting into the, the semi-finals of the MTMA. You know, I'm an ambitious coach uh, that's come to Maritzburg. And this is a club that uh, would love to win trophies, hasn't had the opportunity of winning a trophy as yet. And obviously, as a coach, I would love to, to try and achieve that yet at Maritzburg. So, I think right now, you know, the squad has been working extremely hard over the past uh, four weeks that we've been back in training. And, uh, you know, and I think everybody's looking forward to, to the match on Sunday. And thank you, Coach. Uh, I'll now take questions from the floor, colleagues. Uh, just by a show of hands, I'll take the first question for Coach Tinkler. Okay, the suspect, Carabo, you can go ahead. Thank you, thank you, Fatua. Good afternoon, Coach. I hope you are. Well. Uh, just, Coach, I just want to take you a bit back uh, to one certain player, that is uh, Tabiso Kutumel. I mean, when he left Toronto Pirates, it all looked like, you know, done and dusted. But here you are. You've been able to give him a new list of life. He's back at Bafana now. He's also had a very, very good game over the course of the weekend. What is it that, that you've, you've helped him with for him to be at this uh, whole different level? Uh, how have you been working with him and what has he changed for him to be the player that he is today, Coach? Yeah, I think obviously when I, when I arrived at the club, um, the first thing that I obviously noticed with Kutu was that he was carrying a little bit of extra weight. So obviously trying to get him physically in better condition was, was obviously the first and most important uh, objective. And uh, it must also go because he put in the work and extra hours to, to shed that weight. And I think that is what's obviously made him a lot stronger, a lot quicker. And obviously, we, we know his ability. We know that he's obviously enhanced and then obviously also, you know, trying to ensure that, you know, his lifestyle uh, off the field uh, has been a better lifestyle. And, uh, and, and credit again must go to him because he's, he's, looking, he's looking after himself, not only on the field, but, but, but also off the field. So I think those have been the two very, very important components to, to him making his way back into the uh, Bafana Bafana squad. Uh, coach, we, we just we lost you a bit there. Uh, I think there's a connection issue on your side. Yes. Sorry, I'll repeat. As I was saying, that uh, to do the first thing he was carrying carrying a bit of weight when I joined. So we needed to, to work on him to shed that weight and, and put his out to ensure that he, he shed that weight. We know his technical abilities and it's really a gifted footballer. Uh, and, and the fact that we, we managed to shed that weight obviously helped him improve his, his game and be a lot better. Uh, in the match. Yeah, as I stated uh, before, when I arrived at the club, the one thing that I noticed about Kutumela was he was carrying extra weight. So the first important factor was obviously to, to ensure that we shed that weight. And credit must go to Kutumela because he worked extremely hard to ensure that, that he got rid of that weight. And obviously, you know, that we know his, his strengths, we know his ability uh, on the ball. And I think the fact the fact that he was a lot fitter obviously enhanced his, his game. And then also, you know, he needed to improve his lifestyle off the field. And again, credit must go to him because he, he has changed that. He's living a better life uh, off the field. And obviously, due to the, the, the work that he's put in and the efforts that he's made, uh, you know, he's been rewarded by, by being called up again into the national team. Uh, let's move on to Sandile. Thanks, Fatu. Um, good afternoon, Coach. Um, coach, with at Mary's Beck, it's, 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 you, you, you've basically enjoyed um, 
uh, all sorts of emotions, you know, from saving the team from relegation, you know, losing a cup final, and, and in life, and, you know, um, being, you know, you know um, had it not been for, you know, uh, a few missed chances, you know, a few good tackles, uh, you'd have been up there, you know, with the challenges. Um, when you look at your ambition and, uh, and, and just uh, the line that, that you want to cross with this team, um, what would you say is the one thing that this team is missing um, uh, in, in order, you know, to, to meet that ambition? <laughs> Very simple, the fans. <laughs> you know, that, that was obviously something we, we obviously lost. We, our momentum was extremely good uh, up until, obviously, uh, lockdown happened. You know, we were, I think we were on five games without a loss. And the, the motivation, the passion, the desire was all there. And then, you know, going into the lockdown and playing in the bubble, um, you know, to, to secure the results that, that we, had, we had hoped we would have secured. And I tend to agree with you. I think had the season have continued, we, we potentially could have, could have finished a lot higher than, than what we did in the, in the league. But I think what's important is obviously my... My ambition, uh, my motivation is always wanting to better myself. Uh, my motivation is wanting to win things and achieve things. And what becomes important is that that rubs off onto to the squad and, the, and you know and the players, the technical staff and the players. So you know I'm the one who has to obviously carry myself in the in the, in the right way. You know, especially now the the way things are. You know, it's going to be very very important, obviously keeping these players highly motivated uh, because it's going to be an extremely tough season, especially, uh, you know, without having uh, our 12th man. You know, they, they were extremely important to us as a team, especially our home games on a Friday night. And, and the fact that we've lost those fans, you know, it's going to be very, very important for, for us as a technical team to, to keep these guys highly motivated. Thank you very much, Coach. Uh, colleagues, do we have any further questions? Yes, please. Okay, Mark Lesson. Uh, Eric, I see you've signed Meza. What do you hope he's going to bring to the side? Yeah, um, Mark, I had Ali Meza here yeah, last season because there was a the potential of taking him on loan. And he came at the beginning of the season. We played a friendly game against Wits. And uh, he spent three days with me and, and he fits it in like a glove. In terms of uh, the way I want us to play, he can play as a footballer, he's an intelligent footballer. So fits fits perfectly into, into the way I want us to play. So when I heard about his availability, I obviously spoke to my chairman about the possibility of us uh, bringing in and, and a lot of credit obviously needs to go to uh, my chairman Farouk Kadodia for, for managing to, to bring the boy here. To be honest also to, to Ali Meza because I think he enjoyed the experience being coached by me for a couple of days or three days if my memory serves me correctly and, and you know he was always speaking to Jeremy Brocky telling Jeremy Brocky you know he wants to be coached by me and, and yeah so that's, that's what's happened. All right, let's go back to Sandile. Le. Uh, Coach, just on um, Richard, uh, reports continue to link him with the move away from the club. Um, what's happening? Yeah, Richard is in negotiations with Orlando Pirates. Um, but as, as we stand right now, Richard is still a Marisburg United uh, player. But discussions are taking place between Orlando Pirates and, and, and Richard Ofori. Do we have any other questions, colleagues? Rob? Uh, yeah, I've, I've got one. Okay, I'll come to you, Lazi. Uh, let's start with Rob, Rob, Rob Delbot. Yeah, Coach, hope you're well. Uh, Rob from Cape Town. 
Um, yes. Just about the, the new technical team. Uh, how's it working out with uh, Delron and Rowan joining? Um, I know you're happy to have a what looks like a stronger technical team for this season. Yeah, uh, you know, the, the chairman and myself, beginning of last season, uh, we had a discussion around the potential of bringing Dalron Buckley in as part of the technical team. Because uh, Dalron can, can bring a lot of knowledge and experience that he can, can pass on not only to the, the PSL players, but also to the multi-choice disky, disky team. So we were always looking to, to try and strengthen the, the technical team. So it was a bit of a no-brainer for us to look to bring in uh, Dalron Buckley. You know, he helps me in terms of uh, any at uh, tactical attacking practices that, that I plan and prepare. You know, the knowledge that he has that he can pass on to the strikers and the wingers is extremely, extremely valuable. You know, the same way I use Vincent because of his knowledge, uh, you know, as a, as a defender to pass on to, to the central defenders and, and obviously the, the fullback. So it was important that we, we brought someone else in. Uh, that obviously could also help us in terms of the first team, like I said, and also with the development. You know, our previous goalkeeper coach, Ricardo Gonçalves, he spent uh, he was four, four months here in lockdown. He has a young family in Portugal, two kids, you know, and, and the man needed to, to go back home. So unfortunately, we needed to replace, replace him. And uh, Rowan was obviously available and someone I, I knew because we worked together at uh, Orlando Pirates. So, so it was a no-brainer to, to bring in the Rowan. Now, the fact of the matter is both are ex-Bafana Bafana players. Both are players that played internationally, played in, in Germany. So, you know, I think they've, they've got a lot of experience. And, you know, the, the, uh, I think the, there's a lot of respect that, that, that the players will obviously show the, the two of them. Okay, Loazi. Coach uh, Loazi Zikobu from Supersport. Um, uh, you might have to forgive me, you might have answered this already, but I just want to speak about Chiefs themselves. Obviously, between the end of the season, the last season, and now there's been a couple of changes there, major changes with the coaching staff. Um, does that make your job a little more difficult? Do you expect pretty much the same Chiefs you've, you've faced over the past couple of seasons, or are you expecting one or two different things that... Um, you know, you, you might expect Gavin Hunt to bring into the side. No, definitely not the same team. Uh, same players, yes, um, because obviously we know the, the issues that Chiefs have. But, you know, it's going to be an extremely different, different team because Gavin Hunt has shown that he's an astute coach. He's won leagues, he's won titles, he's won cups. Uh, and those players are going to be obviously highly motivated to, to show their worth to, to Gavin. You know, Gavin is a winner. He plays a particular brand of football that is difficult to compete against. I think last season, Kaiser Chiefs were very good, particularly on the set pieces. <clears throat> and uh, under Gavin, that, that's going to continue, if not get better. So, you know, I don't think we can compare... Uh, last season to, to this upcoming season and we need to plan and prepare ourselves uh, extremely extremely hard because it's going to be a tough a, a tough battle because they, they always are when you play against a, a team coached by Gavin Hunt. Okay, thank you coach. Uh, let's go to Mark Lesson again. Just following up on that very good question from Loazi, can I uh, ask whether there isn't perhaps uh, still a little bit of an undercooked factor with him, uh, just in terms of confidence? I mean, uh, Hunt might have come in and uh, shaken things up a little bit, but when you have when you crash and burn like they did towards the end of last season, then, and then you compound it with the fact that they are unable to get any new players, do you feel you can still take advantage of, of a side that is still a little bit down in the dumps? That's the hope, Mark. <laughs> That's the hope. But I think obviously we, we will only really know what state they are psychologically when, when that referee blows that whistle. 
you know obviously you would you would think that possibly those players would still be feeling the effects of having lost the league the way they lost the league um but as i stated before they they've got a very astute coach uh somebody who wants to win and and achieve things and and you know the same way i i i believe that my my uh, my winning mentality and my philosophy rubs off on my players i think it's the same thing with 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 gavin hunt so so we we can't rely on that fact that we've got to plan and prepare ourselves as though you know this is a an extremely strong uh, strong team All right. Uh, thank you very much, Coach. Uh, I think we're going to end it here. I don't think we've got any further questions. Thank you very much, Coach, and uh, all the best for Sunday.